Hey YouTube. So today uh, I have all the track plates ready. So we're going to bolt them onto the chains now. And this is uh, of course a long and painful process to me. <laughs> but I will fast forward the footage so you don't have to watch the whole thing. I think this will take me about maybe 25 minutes to bolt all the track plates on. <laughs> So, wish me luck. See you soon. So that's one track down, uh, now there's only one left. I'm going to do the other one off camera, so I'll see you soon. So here's both the tracks ready. They're ready to be mounted up. Um, next step, I think I will file down the sprockets so that they will mesh easier with the, with, uh, with the chains. And then I was thinking I would put a single layer of paint on these just to get the same color as the undercarriage. Using this file, uh, I remembered that the tracks were rubbing against these, so I'm go going to trim down these as well on both sides. So hopefully that's enough to keep the tracks from rubbing. So here's why I trim down the sprockets. Uh, as you can see the teeth are now pointed. That means they will mesh much easier with the chains when they go into the grooves like this. So here's the undercarriage uh, completed. I haven't uh, mounted the tracks completely yet. Uh, I actually have to take them off again uh, because they will complicate the build when I try to fasten the overcarriage. So these tracks have to come off and I have to mount them probably last. So. This is just to show you how the undercarriage looks with the tracks on. Oh, uh, as for size, it's 29 centimeters or 11 and a half inches wide, and the length is 41 and a half centimeters or 16 inches something. So, so it has a nice size to it, and also the weight, it, it this weighs a lot right now, so things are looking good. So now that the undercarriage is finished, 
Uh, we're going to start assembling the overcarriage and then we're going to paint it. So as you can see, uh, these are 90 degree steel, I don't know what they're called, uh, they're, they're, they're made of steel. <laughs> uh, people use them to build houses uh, and these are perfect for our boom mounts, the big arm that's called a boom. So these are part of the design that I made. Uh, they're supposed to be mounted here and they will keep most of the parts for the floor together so that I can plastic weld everything and add the steel floor later. But first, before we mount these, uh, we have to mount uh, these parts because once these steel parts are mounted, we can't access the screws from the uh, this side, so we have to put these on first. So that's the mount for the boom.
used the mess, but uh, this is where I bend the steel plates and also where I store my <laughs> cardboard. <laughs> Let's check if this plate will fit first, before I bend the second part. I might have to bend it a little on the inside or on the outside, we'll see. Yeah. So it's a good thing we checked. Uh, it looks like we're going to have to bend it a, a millimeter or two on the inside. Oh, by the way, <laughs> this is where I rest my camera, so you can watch there. This is actually my very first excavator, the first one I ever made. Um, it's been retired now. It's uh, a bit uh, rough on the edges and it's very bad, you can see. <laughs> so, and the Volvo. The one I'm building now is actually the seventh, so let's finish this plate. So the question is, does it fit? Yes, it does. So, I'm gonna mount this now. I have to use my soldering iron to um, melt the holes for the screws. Uh, on these parts, I don't want to use a drill because if you use a drill, it will just uh, cut everything while the soldering iron, on the other hand, melts everything together. So, when I use the soldering iron, the plastic will be much much stronger than if I would use a drill so let's get the soldering iron ready oh and it seems I've forgotten to cut out the part where the swing motor comes so I'm gonna have to do that So the main floor is completed and installed, so now here's a little tip for, for you. When I drill these holes, you can see the steel has got some artifacts here. And I can't access those with my file. So what do we do? Well, we put on a much bigger drill bit and then we drill easily on this side. I'll show you. So, let's turn on the lights. There's what I do, just... You see? Now the holes are clean.
So the bottom plate is now in place. By the way, I forgot to show you uh, the counterweight, it's uh, hollow so I can put uh, weights and stuff inside and then there's this, you just bolt this one on top afterwards. So here's the, uh, what do you call this, the top floor, it goes on here. And of course, uh, this isn't mounted yet. <coughs> I printed this separately because I wanted to paint the overcarriage first and then I want this radiator to be chrome. So in order to be able to paint that chrome, I have to glue this on afterwards. cover. I'm printing them right now so they'll be finished soon. Also I have to make a battery tray here. I'll probably just use some steel or something. So, so that's it for today. Uh, I actually noticed I've, I'm missing a panel right here. So I have to print that before I paint it. So. I'm gonna paint it the next time. I'm still missing the swing motor. It hasn't arrived yet, so I'm hoping it won't take too long. But, well, I need the motor to mount the overcarriage to the undercarriage, so let's cross our fingers. Anyway, see you next time. Bye bye. <music>